autocorrelation is one of the most useful tools for time series analysis. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what autocorrelation is, why it's important, and how we can use it in Python. So let's get into it. On the screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through that's going to give us the ins and outs of autocorrelation and how we can apply it in Python. So let's first start with basically kind of the, you know, the main reasoning behind autocorrelation. So in times of analysis, what we're after is about you know, try to analyze our data so that we can make accurate forecasts for the future because it's used in businesses, uh, which I discussed before, and it's a very useful concept forecasting to have um, in any industry you're in. Now, to be able to forecast effectively, we need to be able to understand our time series um, and be able to diagnose it. And one way to diagnose it is through autocorrelation. So as I've written here, autocorrelation allows us to decide what features to add to our forecasting model. This is particularly important when we go to like things like ARIMA models, um, which we'll discuss in a later video. But autocorrelation is a critical tool when this, when um, when working out which features to add to the ARIMA model. Again, we'll discuss this in a later on video, but this is going to be the groundwork, and also there's some other important parts of autocorrelation that that we need to understand. So let's now talk about what autocorrelation is. So autocorrelation is just the correlation of a time series of itself, but at different lags. Now, as I've written here, correlation is just a measure of how strongly two variables are related to each other. So if the value is one, if the correlation between two values is one, that means they're perfectly positively correlated. So when one variable goes up, the other one goes up by the, you know, by the same or linear amount as the other one went up by. If it's minus one, the correlation, that means they're perfectly negatively correlated. So what that means is if one variable goes up, the other one goes down by the same amount. And this value of correlation ranges between one and minus one, and zero is where the two variables have pretty much no correlation. They have no kind of relationship to each other. And obviously, depending on how far you are to the one or minus one, uh, measures how strong the relationship is, right? Now, in the case of autocorrelation, all we're doing is basically measuring the correlation of a time series by different lags to itself, right? And by lags, I'm talking about different points in time. So. Here's the equation for it. Don't worry too much about it. But all it's saying, as you can see here, is that we're summing up the the correlation of the time series at multiple lags, which in this case is k, where t is well n is the number of time series points we have, and t is the time, and k is the the time the time series. So what we're doing is getting the time series now, and then we're taking it back one step, and then we're autocorrelating it, taking it back one step again, autocorrelating it. And by doing that, we get a correlation coefficient. And what we can see, we can see some patterns emerging that can be useful to diagnose our time series. So the key point to remember is that autocorrelation is just the time series being lagged by itself at different lags or time intervals in the past. So the why we need this and why it's useful, there's kind of twofold. So I already mentioned about how it's useful to determine which features to add to our models. But the two ones we get directly from autocorrelation is that we can see any seasonality. So as I said here, let's say we may find that at a certain autocorrelation, we have a, there's a spike, right? So say we, our data is monthly indexed, and for every 12th multiple of lags, we will find that it peaks, right? And it peaks because that's clearly a yearly seasonality, a uh, monthly index. Same way with, you know, if we have a daily data, and let's say the daily data is um, lagging at every seventh multiple, uh, or the peak, the peak of the lags at every seventh multiple, that means we have a weekly date um, seasonality. We'll go over an example in a second that'll make this more concrete, but that's an example. So seasonality, we can see if there's, an, if there's constant peaks and patterns in autocorrelation that can measure seasonality. The next one is trend. So trend basically says that if the recent lags are more correlated than the older lags, this indicates, and this pattern is like consistently declining, this indicates that the time series has a trend. As a trend, we need to remove it because we want to ensure stationarity. If you're not clear what stationarity is, make sure to check out my previous video, which I'll link somewhere on the screen here. Um, it's a very important concept, and I have a set of videos ab about it that you should go over, which I'll, I'm not going to explain it in this video. So I hope that will make sense to you. Um, again, re you can read over this notebook in your own time. Um, I've, also, uh, I've also attached a blog in the description for this one if um, you're interested in reading this in more of a, you know, you know well, in a read, if you want to read it as opposed to in a video format. So now let's go for an example to make this theory a bit more concrete. So we'll start with just reading a data set that I get from Kaggle. This data set I've used throughout this uh, this time series course is just the airline passenger volume in the US in the 50s. Don't worry too much about actual numbers, it's more the pattern which one to really notice here. So like I said, um, this is showing how, how the US airline 
uh, passenger volume has changed in the 50s. As you can see, it generally increased in that decade. And also we observe some yearly seasonality um, where you know it peaks in the summer months and kind of drops in the winter months. So we have an obvious um, yearly seasonality and a trend's increasing through time. Now the way we perform autocorrelation on this plot is by simply getting this plot ACF function that we got from stats models. And all we do, we can run this inside matplotlib and the following result will look like this. So as I said, what it's done is that it's basically carried out autocorrelation at different time steps and plotted the results in like this. So what we see here is basically something quite, you know, quite obvious that we have a yearly seasonality. We saw this above an above plot, you know, like I said, every winter months we have lower uh, passengers and every summer months we have higher passengers. And this is clearly showing autocorrelation where at every 12th you know, multiple we're having a peak, right? And dips and peaks. This is because what we're saying is the time step at every 12th multiple is very correlated to the time series at this point in time. So, you know, this if, we, if we, this was YT, then the, the plot here will be very, the, the autocorrelation here will be very correlated with it. But don't worry too much about it. What we can see here is it's obvious the seasonality, this oscillating behavior. The other thing to note is that, like we said, there's a trend, and this has obviously been shown by autocorrelation because the the correlate, autocorrelations at their lower lags, or the most recent lags, is a lot higher than the correlations that say the 50th lag or whether it's 48th lag. And again, this is just picked up that trend behavior and also seasonality behavior, which is information we can now use when building a forecasting model. The other thing to note about this plot is it's like this blue shaded region. This blue shaded region is the significance or whether the lag is statistically significant. Don't worry too much about it, but basically what it's trying to portray is that after about lag, you know, 14 or so, the lags no longer have much kind of information about the current time step. So, you know, this lag here, I would say lag 40, it's not overly important when trying to predict YT or YT plus one as an example, because it's kind of, it's very irrelevant to what the current value of the time series is. Um, and these are really important when creating forecasting models to know how many lags we should include in the model uh, what, and to at what point they will stop, stop becoming significant in affecting the forecasts. Let's quickly recap with the key points discussed in this video. Autocorrelation is where we correlate a time series with itself and multiple lags. The reason we do this is that we can detect seasonality and also the trend and also we can help us decide how many lags to add to our forecasting model and make our model the best possible. It is a very important and useful tool, so I definitely recommend you apply it for any of your time series models in the future. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, then make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Make sure you also comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.